Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Report number 48665, Class Alpha, Year 2015, State, Louisiana. Observed 100% Bigfoot, Melville, Louisiana, approximately 115 on a rainy day. Bigfoot walked out of the tree line, took five steps to the right, and back into the tree line about 100 yards away from our house. Also noticed broken tree limbs. Other witnesses, one. Other stories, yes. Time and conditions, 1.15 p.m. Environment, rainy. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Michael Janakis. I spoke with the husband H and wife W. Location is near Melville, Louisiana, northeast of Lafayette. They are on a property that has 70 acres of land, most of which is heavy forest and swamplands. Their land is adjacent to a bayou and is close to a major river, the Achafalava River. Their land is also located near Achafalava Wildlife Refuge. Background, both H and W are in their 30s. They are from the Ozarks originally. They moved to this property earlier this year. The property had been vacant for seven years prior following the death of the elderly female owner. To H's knowledge, there are no reports that he's aware of from the lady or nearby residents. The property was vacant for seven years simply because of the remote location. The report, Monday, 5-11-15 at 1.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There is a light rain. Home alone, W is standing outside on the west end of the home smoking a cigarette. She then hears a high-pitched, short-duration whoop near the tree line 105 yards to her southwest. The distance was subsequently measured by H. Between her and the tree line is a one to two foot high meadow. The hoop causes her to drop her cigarette. As she's picking it up from the wet ground, she then hears a very low pitched, deep, manly whoop coming from what she felt was the same general location of the first whoop just seconds prior. She looks up and sees a seven and a half to eight foot tall Sasquatch stepping out from the tree line. It used both arms to push the trees aside in order to step out. As it steps out, W sees the thigh muscle flexing. It has dark brown hair, but it wasn't fur-like. It's just hairy. You could see skin beneath the hair in many places. The top of the head has shorter hair, but the back of the head is longer hair. She describes it as looking like a mullet very muscular, no neck. As it steps out fully in one stride, it immediately turns to its right and takes five long steps, swinging its arms before it turns right and steps back into the forest. The witness repeats several times that the oddest part of this whole event was that the Sasquatch never once looked up, not at her, the house, or the meadow. It purposely looked down the entire time. W felt as if to imply it was not a threat. As it took the five steps, it would lean back as it brought its foot up, then lean forward into the step. When H went to the area to investigate it, he said that ground had sticker bushes two feet tall and four feet across, which would account for the deliberate steps. He also added there was no way for him to make those same steps. It was too far of a stride with the sticker bushes in the way. It walked somewhat hunched over, long arms, hands lower than the knees. She described the shoulder width as being massive, two and a half times the width of her husband, 5'11", 205 pounds. When the squatch was stepping back into the tree line, it had to duck slightly under a thick tree limb. H later measured the limb to be seven and a half feet above the ground. W called H, who was several hours away at school in Baton Rouge, and asked him to come home immediately. H said she's a very level-headed person and she's never made a request like this, so he came home immediately. When H went to the area, he stayed on the phone with W, who was able to guide him into the exact spot. 
H said he could not see one to two feet into the trees due to dense, tall underbrush. As he stepped into the tree line, he could see an area of trampled down grass and broken four feet long limbs that had been stacked. He said you could see where something had been pacing and it looked like it had been going for a long time. There were also limbs broken eight to nine feet above. Some, H said, were greater than six inches in diameter. No prints, no hair was visible. The area inside the tree smelled like wet dog. He said his house was visible from within this hidden area and that was all he could imagine it was for. No discernible trail could be seen inside the tree line. He said the entire time he was inside the tree line, he felt uneasy. He described it not as being scared or being hunted or anything, rather that this was something else's area and he didn't belong there. Last night, his dog started barking for the first time and went running out to that same spot at the tree line but wouldn't go into the trees. After a minute, they suddenly stopped and came running back to the house. Today, they will not go anywhere near the trees. There are many cows in the area. H says one of them died two weeks ago and the rancher had let it lay there to rot. H wonders if that bad stink of the decaying cow somehow attracted the squatch. He says there are lots of deer and hogs in the woods and swamp areas, as well as horses and cows. There are bears, but he's been told they've all been given neck collars that are visible for tracking their movement. He says he and his wife are familiar with bears and that what W saw was not a bear. This is a follow-up report for number 48665H. Sunday, July 3rd, 2016, hot and humid summer, late afternoon, H, his wife, and his wife's friend are riding horses at their ranch when one of the young dogs gets accidentally trampled and killed. H's daughter, 14 years old, D, was particularly fond of the dog and was distraught. She jumped on a quad and drove it down a dirt road a distance from the home. She stopped in a remote area next to the bayou and surrounded by forest. It was now dusk and was beginning to get dark. Clear skies, no moon lit, a new moon that day less than 2% visible. H and his wife's friend were trying to dig a grave for the dog near the house. He mentioned the ground being very hard. From a distance that H estimates to be 200 to 300 yards into the forest, both H and the friend hear a loud, powerful scream coming from the forest. H had a difficult time describing the scream. He said he's never heard anything like it. It was not an Ohio howl type of scream. His exact words were that as it was like a long screech scream. He said it was so loud that it echoed and drowned out the sound of a nearby oil pump. I directed him to several websites with recorded screams to see if he could find something close to it. Interesting, however, D was closer to the direction of the scream but did not hear it. At the same time H was burying the dog, D is still parked at the remote spot. She was sobbing loudly. She tried to call her girlfriend, Paige, to tell her about the dog, but she got no signal. She continued to cry, and in frustration, she took off her hat and hit the quad with it. That's when she heard a knock on a nearby tree. H did not know how loud it was. Need to ask D. She turned around and scanned the forest in the direction she thought the knock came from. Her first scan she saw nothing, but on her second scan she saw a Bigfoot staring back at her. He was 15 feet away, peering from behind a tree, both eyes, most of head and most of shoulder. She said she was terrified and did not move. After a few seconds, the Bigfoot slowly stepped out from behind the tree, its entire body and head visible to her. After a few moments, it turned to the left and slowly, calmly walked into the forest. Not taking her eyes off of the Bigfoot, Dee started up the quad. 
H says it's not in the best mechanical shape and is very loud, but the sound did not startle the creature. It looked back briefly, but never slowed or accelerated its stride. She described the creature as being huge with massive shoulders. She said she could clearly make out the balls of its shoulders and they were very muscular. She did describe to H that it had a visible neck, which is interesting. Hair everywhere except around its eyes and on its hands. She said the eyes were huge and had no white. They were dark colored and she could make out a smaller pupil. She said it looked and moved like it would be very fast and limber. H went back to, sighting, to the sighting spot that night with neighbor and D. They measured the height to be seven and a half to eight feet tall. He said there was what he thought was a significant amount of saliva on the tree in the spot the mouth would have been. He collected it with a knife and cellophane wrap. It's probably not a viable sample. He could not find footprints, but there were heavy depressions in the forest litter. He has been fascinated with the Bigfoot subject since his wife's sighting last year and thought to bring a banana and some tomatoes to the site with him. He left the tomatoes on a stump and the banana in the crook of the tree it had stood behind. Three days later, the banana and tomatoes were missing. At the stump where the, where the tomatoes were located, there was a new pile of nine rocks. He also says he's since found the stem of the banana peel on top of sticks that were placed in a crook of a tree nearby. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your